Minecraft Java Edition and Minecraft Bedrock Edition are both great versions, but there are many features that aren't the same between the two, so in this video I'll show you 20 of them. The first big difference is that one major feature of maps is completely different. If we place down a crafting table, there's only one way of making maps in Java, and that's by having a compass surrounded by paper. However, in Bedrock, if you get out a cartography table and literally just put a singular piece of paper inside of that cartography table, that can turn it into a map, meaning that maps are literally eight times cheaper inside a Bedrock Edition, including of course you don't need a compass. You can even name the map in the cartography table and that's also completely free. However, here's the big catch. If we right click to open up the map and take a look around it, you see one big difference, which is the fact that we cannot see ourselves on it. That's where the locator map comes in. Simply take your filled out map already and add a compass to it in the anvil, and that'll combine both those things, costing no XP, and we've now turned this map that's already filled out to have that locator added onto it. The next incredibly major difference between Minecraft Bedrock and Minecraft Java is that Minecraft Bedrock Edition has what Minecraft Java players would call 1.8 PvP, and this applies to all kinds of mobs, and so because of that, if you're careful, you can basically PvP in a way that's a lot easier inside of Minecraft Bedrock. Although tell me in the comments below what PvP system do you like better, the 1.8 PvP and Bedrock Edition PvP system, or the Minecraft 1.9 and onwards PvP system. And another way in which it's sort of like 1.8 PvP is that axes are super underpowered. In Minecraft Java Edition, axes are probably overpowered, but in Bedrock Edition they're much worse of a weapon, although they do still qualify as a weapon and they can work as one, they're nowhere near as good as the axes in Java Edition, and so definitely I would suggest sticking to a sword if you play Bedrock. You probably don't give much thought to witch huts inside of Minecraft, other than if you're let's say building a witch farm, but there is one major difference in witch huts between Java and Bedrock, and that's the fact of the one cauldron that is found inside that witch hut. Inside of Bedrock, there's actually a completely random potion that can be found inside of here, and that can be out of any single potion type. And of course, because you can't have potions inside of cauldrons in Java Edition, this doesn't generate like this, just with an empty cauldron. But here's where this gets really crazy. This can also include the Potion of Decay. You might be wondering what in the world the Potion of Decay is. Well, the Potion of Decay is a potion that is only inside Minecraft Bedrock Edition, but even inside of Bedrock it is only obtainable inside of Creative, except for one way, and that only one way is by finding it as a randomly generated potion inside of the Witch Hut Cauldrons as an insanely rare chance. Crafted with Crying Obsidian and Glowstone, we have the Respawn Anchor. Respawn Anchors are charged with Glowstone up to four times, and once they're charged at all, so even once or four times, if you right click on them without Glowstone, stone in your hand, you can set your respawn point to them. However, other than some visual differences, here is a major difference between them in Bedrock and Java. So if you break the respawn anchor in Java edition, whether or not it is not charged at all or fully charged, basically what will happen is it will drop as just a standard respawn anchor. But if you break a respawn anchor in Bedrock edition and that respawn anchor has any charge to it whatsoever, that respawn anchor will drop as a different item and this item will go into our inventory, a respawn anchor with the amount of charge in it that it has. And although considering that glowstone is not that valuable of an item, it's kind of a useless thing, I still do find this to be quite an interesting fact of the respawn anchors between Bedrock and Java. Ground and Minecraft are completely different between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition, and the biggest difference is that they're way stronger in one way in Bedrock, and also better in a way. That is the fact that way more drowns carry the tridents inside of Bedrock Edition, but as well as that the percentage of drowns that drop tridents is also much higher in Bedrock Edition. For instance, right there, we've already gotten a trident. And this is in two different ways. So of course in Java, the drown trident drop rate is very, very low, and in Bedrock it's quite high. As you can see right there, out of three trident drowns we killed, two of them have already dropped tridents. But as well as that, there's the other difference too, which is the fact that a higher percentage of drowns will hold the tridents. And this makes the drowns much stronger, as a trident drowned is actually a fairly difficult thing to defeat overall. And so because of that, it's 
very easy to get killed by just one trident drown that happens to be there. In fact, out of all the trident drowns we killed, four out of the five of them have already dropped a trident. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the trident drowns tridents are insanely easy to get. Leads work pretty differently between both versions, and here's one of those major differences. The fact that boats, because they're considered to be an entity, can actually be grabbed onto with leads. So if we place down a whole bunch of boats, and we right-click on those boats with a lead in our hand, you can see those boats now have leads attached to them. These boats can be chest boats, or they can just be empty boats with mobs in them or without mobs in them. It's all up to you. And then if we get into one of those boats, what can actually happen is we can swim around moving these boats with the leads attached to them. They can't really do too many at once as they do tend to break off, but of course inside of Java Edition there's literally no way of doing this at all, which means that you could bring with you a bunch of different mobs in Bedrock very very easily by putting them inside of boats, connecting leads to those boats, and then holding those leads in your hands and going for a nice peaceful ride through the ocean here, observing the coral reef and also letting our chest boats full of items and maybe standard boats full of mobs be pushed around. Snow layers also work very differently between Bedrock and Java. In Java, if we were going to break this block here, that snow layer would just disappear above it. However, inside of Bedrock, they actually have gravity, so if we break this, those snow layers will actually fall right onto the ground, and the snow layers can also combine. So, for example, we could have these blocks fall down, and basically they'll add to each other like this, going more and more into being full snow blocks. And if it is currently raining in the Minecraft Bedrock Edition world, these snow layers can actually go higher and higher to be much more than just one block tall, and you can see that right here. Of course we have these one block tall snow layers right here, but they get even higher up being then here two blocks tall, three blocks tall, and I didn't place them like this. These snow layers just naturally accumulated on top of each other, becoming higher and higher up. Here are some other really interesting things you probably did not know about snow layers inside of Minecraft Bedrock, and this is definitely not how it works in Minecraft Java. And that is that certain plants, such as flowers, can actually be snow logged. Now, what do I mean by snow logged? Well, basically what I mean is that they can be actually covered up with snow layers, just like this. I really love this effect because it's so natural and it makes a lot of sense. And I really do hope inside of Minecraft Java one day we'll have this as well, maybe in some sort of snow-related update. And as you can see here, we can partially or fully cover flowers all the way up in snow layers. So there's literally two blocks that are inhabiting this. We have the flower as well as the snow layer, in one block. It's much better than just having those little grass block holes around a world where flowers are placed down. This makes things look much more realistic as well as interesting, so you can actually have realistically snow-covered flowers inside of your world. Here's a difference between Minecraft Bedrock and Java that's very likely to be changed pretty soon, and that's the fact of trends being able to be thrown out of dispensers. The reason why we know this might come to Java in the future is that in a Java combat test, which came out a very long time ago, Trance had the ability to be thrown this way. I'm sure this could be used somehow inside of certain mob farms. And you can even use this to do pretty crazy things, like let's say have a trident show, where you have a ton of tridents inside of a dispenser, and you have that dispenser go off, and you basically have those tridents all be flung all the way up into the air, and then eventually they'll fall down on the ground, seeing where they land. You could literally even do a random number generator this way if you wanted, by having like a checkerboard on the ground, each one with a different color, then flick the lever on and off a whole bunch of times to make all those dispensers dispensers be dispensed out, and then see where they all land, and wherever those tridents land will be whatever number is picked. Cakes in Minecraft are quite a fun item. Crafted with three milk buckets at the top of the crafting grid, then three wheat at the bottom, an egg in the center, and a piece of sugar on either side, that will give you one cake, returning those buckets. And if you don't use cakes a lot in Minecraft, you might not even be able to tell the difference now. But it's that cakes are stackable inside of Minecraft Bedrock Edition, but they're not stackable inside of Java Edition. And something funny as well is that Bedrock Edition used to have two different types of cakes. One that was sort of a square type texture, kind of like you're looking at the item from far away in the actual inventory, and the other one being this separate kind of item texture that's more rounded on the edges like a real cake. And I wonder if this strange reason of there being two different types of cakes is why cakes are stackable in one version but not the other. But either way, no matter what the reason is, it is an interesting little difference between the versions, as well as of course the differences of spam clicking and Bedrock's PvP. There's also another major difference between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition's PvP system, and that's the fact of the sweeping edge enchantment, and even just straight up the sweeping edge effect. Now the sort of effect of hitting multiple mobs at once happens in Java Edition, whether or not you have the enchantment as long as you're using a sword, which basically means let's say we were to hit one of these zombies right here, the other zombies 
next to it would be likely to get hurt unless we were doing a critical attack. There's literally no way of ever hitting more than one mob at once inside a bedrock. And so because of that, it just straight up works completely differently. However, another major difference is the sharpness enchantment. We have the sharpness enchantment on our sword right here, and the sharpness enchantment works much better in bedrock than it does in java. In fact, inside a bedrock edition, I would always suggest sharpness over smite, but in java, I would usually suggest smite over sharpness. That's because of the fact that the sharpness enchantment deals a huge amount of extra damage inside a bedrock. Most Minecraft players don't have too much difficulty building iron golems and snow golems the only two golem mobs in the game, although I would say withers are fairly similar. However, there is an interesting way that you can build these inside of bedrock that you cannot build them in java. So of course normal way is a t-shape of iron with a curved pumpkin on top for the iron golem, and two blocks of snow with a curved pumpkin on top for the snow golem. However, inside of bedrock there's another weird way you can make this, which is you can use standard pumpkins. That's right, you do not have to use curved pumpkins to summon snow golems as well as iron golems into the game. I actually have no idea why this is, and I find it kind of weird considering the fact that they're literally carved on the actual texture for the snow golem. So it makes you obviously wonder why in the world they don't need to have their pumpkin be curved, but they don't. You can make with curved pumpkins or uncurved pumpkins. It never ceases to amaze me in Minecraft, the absolutely crazy places that can generate around in it. Like for instance, let's say this beautiful meadow here that has this huge cave intersecting it. But as well as world generation like this, there can also be incredibly crazy structural generation. So inside of Java Pillager Outpost, generate on top of sort of a floating biscuit shape of dirt and stone, whereas inside a bedrock edition they will generate sort of like the woodland mansions, making an extended version of their base, going all the way down till they reach the bottom of where they're going. And so because of this you can get some crazy stuff, and this is nowhere near even what the craziest would be. This is also not pure cobblestone, in fact if we break into this it has a core of pure birch, which is actually really really strange if you think about it. Every single layer after this just repeats itself till it reaches the bottom, meaning we have this insane core of birch planks, like we're talking thousands and thousands of birch planks that are going all the way down here. Banners are significantly different between Minecraft Java and Minecraft Bedrock, and I'll show you how. If we place down a loom and take a look inside of it, you can see there's a bunch of pre-made patterns here where basically we can use these patterns without a need of a special banner pattern. However, there's two banner patterns that are missing here. That is the border indented as well as the field mason. So why aren't they here? Well, basically inside of bedrock, these two enchantments are actually their own banner patterns. So as you can see right here, we can combine paper and vines into border indented banner patterns. And with these two together, you can see we now have that. Also, if we have paper and a brick block in the crafting grid, that will give us the field mason. And so now that we have these, we can then of course place these inside the crafting grid along with thigh, and place these textures onto our banners. But without those, it's not actually possible. That's how you do it. You have to get special patterns for those inside of bedrock. If you're thinking of raiding a bastion inside of Minecraft bedrock, maybe go for it, because the piglin brutes inside of bedrock are actually way easier than they are in Java. And they're definitely nowhere near an easy mob, but they are much easier than they are in the Java edition. Another big difference between the brutes in Java and Bedrock is that inside of Java edition, the brutes will never attack anything but a player that's trying to steal from them or be near them. However, inside of Bedrock edition, if a piglin decides to fight a hoglin, that'll make it so that the brutes join in and also help in that fight, which is definitely not something that happens, and you can see that right now. The piglins have decided to fight the hoglins, and so all these brutes are going to join in. This does not happen in Java whatsoever, but I really love this feature, because it makes the brutes seem almost inhuman or basically not really like the other piglins, but I think making them still be just, you know, a different warrior class of the piglins is not only more realistic, but also makes that piglin society make a lot more sense. Here's a very strange thing you can do in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and that is you can use fortune to duplicate tall flowers. You saw that happen right there. We broke two tall flowers, and with the second tall flower, it dropped literally literally 8 tall flowers instead of 1, taking also no durability off of our tool. Right there, we broke a tall flower, it dropped 5. We broke this one, it only drops 1. We break this one, also only drops 1. We break this one, it just dropped a ton. And so by basically laying out and breaking tall flowers, you can duplicate them, 
giving yourself infinite red dye, infinite yellow dye, and of course infinite pink and magenta dye, and infinite orange dye from all the other tall flower types, and the things you can craft from them. This is actually insanely overpowered if you think about it, considering the fact that this duplication glitch has been in the game for a very long time. It's unlikely to be patched out anytime soon, and so if you're a bedrock player, I would highly suggest duplicating tall flowers as much as you possibly can. Now here's one big difference between Java and Bedrock that you can't see, but you definitely experience every time you play it. And this is one thing that I really dislike about Bedrock Edition, and that's the inability to pause. So if we go like this, we're not actually paused. And I'll show you, for example, let's break some items so we see them floating on the ground and moving. If this was Bedrock and we pressed escape, they would stop moving around on the ground. But you can kind of see here if I position it correctly in the background, those items are still moving. Or for instance, right here, those rabbits are still moving around in the background, even if we go like this. Additionally, if you're playing on a server and you tab off, what'll basically happen? is will auto disconnect you from the game, which I also don't like very much. However, in Java Edition, there's two ways of pausing. The first way of pausing is by, of course, just pressing escape. Unless your world's open to land, then it won't pause. Or if you're on a server, of course, it wouldn't pause. And the other way is just by a simple F3 command. Here is 100% one of my favorite features of Bedrock Edition that is sadly lacking in Java. And that's one of these advanced uses of the cauldron. Now cauldrons overall have a ton more uses in Bedrock than Java, but here's just one of the big ones, and that's the ability to, of course, after you put water inside cauldrons, to then dye that water. You can even put multiple types of dye in there to change around the colors that are in the water, with all kinds of amazing colors being able to be used. And really interesting color combinations as well. But this is not just a beautiful visual, although you can definitely use it for that. These are actually used for is dye leather. So if we get our leather items out here, we can turn these leather boots to be the color of pink that we combine there, or we can do just standard pink, unmixed, or mixed colors. Of course, some of these colors we obtain by mixing different colors together, but some of these other colors were just one straight color put in here. Well, let's take a look at chunkbase.com and see if this is actually true. So this is on Minecraft Java Edition. We're going to look around the beachside biomes just to see kind of how common buried treasure is. There is one right there. There's there's a couple over here, but again if we're going around beach biomes, it's not insanely common to find these buried treasure. Now if we switch over to bedrock edition, you might see something is insanely different over here. That's the fact that most of the ocean structures, like let's say the ocean ruins, are about the same. The buried treasure is not the same. There is an insanely large amount of buried treasure inside of Minecraft bedrock edition versus Java. It seems that literally every single chunk in bedrock edition has a buried treasure in it. Although that isn't actually quite true, that's not too far from the truth, because if we look over here, there's about 20 buried treasure in this small cove. If we switch over to Java Edition and scroll down, there's not even one buried treasure in that small cove. And the last thing is not something that there is in Bedrock, but something that there isn't. There is no spectral arrow inside of Bedrock Edition. And this is something that bugs me quite a bit, because why not? Why is there no spectral arrow in Minecraft Bedrock Edition? I'm sure there's some boring technical reason as to why, but I think in reality, Mojang could definitely make it so that this is being added to the Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Especially since if it's late at night and you're hunting mobs, it can actually be very, very difficult to see which mobs you're hitting and which mobs you're trying to target. And because of the spectral arrow effect, if you hit a mob once, they'll then have a glowing outline around them, which of course you can't see right now because there are no spectral arrows in Bedrock. Now thankfully there are tipped arrows in Bedrock, so you can still do useful things like giving zombies water breathing or their skeleton counterparts, really something they need. I hope you enjoyed those 20 weird differences between Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Minecraft Java Edition. So if you enjoyed this video, I would definitely appreciate appreciate a like. I will see you in the next video and have a great day. Goodbye.